Happy New Year, everybody. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Um, let's see. First item is the uh, the minutes, and there was one uh, change that James was stupid enough to catch, uh, and that was that it's not just applications, but all submissions for consideration uh, must be received uh, two business days before our meeting or. Since the meeting is usually on Monday, it would be by uh, Wednesday night. So I appreciate that. Um, we also had uh, an additional item put on the agenda just today. I would ask that in the future that agenda items be submitted by Friday. Uh, to put it on at the last minute is not uh, Consider it for all the members, and it's not going to get the kind of review that it probably deserves. Um, so we can just keep that in mind going forward. Uh, the next meeting is minutes. Oh, the minute so the minutes approved as with that change. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Um, anyone else have anything to point out on the minutes? That was it, right? That's the only thing I saw. I'm in favor. <laughs> we, um, do we want to try to put that, put a note about the, uh, the submission deadline um, on the website where we have, we post agendas and items and stuff like that, just so people are aware when they look at it. It's a good idea. Probably a good idea. Yeah. 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 Uh, next meeting is February 12th. Why, why is it not on the 5th? Do we know? Uh, this, uh, there is something. There's a conflict. There's a conflict with another yeah. committee. Yeah, I lost my sheet, so I. Oh, because we uh, remember we swap for the second Monday of the month with the CAC. Uh, because CAC needs to do work that's scheduled with the planning board. So, last year, so this is forever. This is forever is the second one of the month. Oh, okay. So the, okay, that's the 12th. Yeah, there's a holiday on the 19th or 12th. Okay, good. And um, so that will, thanks. You want to write a copy? I'm getting another copy. So you said February 12th? February 12th. And uh, we're going to, I'd like to do it at 5 p.m. In fact, I'd like to yeah. do all the meetings for this foreseeable future at 5 p.m. if that works for everybody. Does that works, work? Works for me. Yeah, at least until the time changes. I think the time, time change was, was we'll see. Yeah, um, that's in. I think it probably will change in March after. After the meeting, I would think. I think. Yeah, I'm not sure what. You know, so maybe the April meeting would go back. Maybe. Yeah. Well, we'll keep it. Well, it's late. It's late by year. I'm fine. So for the next at least few meetings, we'll. Well, Mark is here. Plan on five p.m. Mark is joining us. Oh, Mark's on? Yeah, Mark's here. Yeah, I, I'm sorry. I had difficulty connecting. Okay, no problem. Happy New Year. Thank you. Uh, let's see. So, uh, uh, all right. So, 5 p.m. we'll do for the next few meetings, at least. Uh, next item on the agenda is uh, other correspondence. So, uh, let's see. I received, or we received, um, Two Army Corps of Engineer letters of coordination since the last meeting. Uh, the town's been receiving these for a, some time, uh, but not distributing them. Uh, I think it's a good idea to distribute them going forward. It gives us a heads up as to what's coming down the pike. Uh, once uh, I guess I guess uh, Amber gets them, she'll give them to Christina. Christina will distribute them to all of us. It's typically a 20 day response time. So if um, if when members see it on there, if they could send in their thoughts, if they have any. Um, and then I will uh, collect all that feedback and draft something to the Army Corps of Engineer and um, and copy everybody with that. Um, let's see the first one we received was uh, regarding landfall properties. This is a dock near Taylor's Island. Um, I, had, I circulated that. I only got a response from Tom who just pointed out, you know, that there's no float at the end of this dock. 
Uh, I assume that's because the dock terminated in two feet of water and the DEC, despite their own guidelines, has not been enforcing the two foot, the two and a half foot rule. Um, so uh, I did respond to that and just pointed that out to the Army Corps of Engineers. Uh, the second letter we got was on Fagan. Uh, no response has been sent yet. That was distributed to everybody for uh, to look at. I believe, is that the Dickerson Crick? Yeah. That right. I did respond. Unfortunately, I responded to only Christina. Yeah. And so I was talking to Matt, and he actually was able to distribute it about, I guess, an hour ago. Yeah. So that I, was bad on my part. Okay. So that everybody's got your response at this point. If anyone yeah. else has responses, what I'm so what I wanted to uh, this was an application that came in prematurely last month, well, and then it, we did not have a DEC permit, so it was bumped. Um, However, before I even realized that there was no DEC uh, permit with the application, um, I, since I'm a friend of the Fagans, and I had just been through a, a uh, ethics question myself, uh, I contacted the uh, ethics committee just to ask them what their what the situation is with friends or people who know someone well on an application that we get. Um, and they, uh, they sent me a response, which I'll sort of uh, ad lib here. So recusal is mandatory for potential financial conflicts of interest under state law and our town law of uh, town code of ethics. Recusal is optional for town officials in circumstances where for any reason they feel they may have a bias or personal connection with another individual that may that would potentially make it harder for them to put the public interest above any such relationship. So in this case, the public interest. Why would they make that optional? Um, you know, I mean, it's like as opposed, as opposed to mandatory. Yeah, it's uh, they're, they're putting it on, I guess, because it's not in state law. I, I don't know if it was local law could be more stringent. Yeah, no, it could be. Um, it makes no at, sense. At any rate, it, it puts the onus on each one of us to uh, make a moral decision as to whether we should or should not recuse ourselves. Um, and of course, you know, recusal, that's, that's recusal from discussion and from voting. So since I uh, know the Fagans, I'm going to recuse myself on even responding to the Army Corps uh, notice. And uh, so I would ask that any responses you have about this notice that you send them to Matt, and then Matt will draft a response to the Army Corps of Engineer. And um, I might take a look at that just from its form only, not substance, and go um, from there. But I would get that in uh, as soon as you can. I'm not here. I, I'm really not sure if we should be if we're responding and we're responding from the WMAC that 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 should be voted on or something before it it, it gets a response you not may not necessarily be speaking for the whole committee if you if you make a response and somebody else on the committee doesn't agree with it so if when we get these notices, if you want to respond individually on your own, God bless you. But as far as responding and saying that this, is, this is the representation of, the, of uh, the, the Waterways Committee of Shelter Island, without a, a consensus or a vote, a public vote at a meeting, I, I think it's, it's not the right thing to do, personally. Um, yeah, I'm just wondering how the I thought about doing it that way uh, when me responding with everyone's input. Uh, if you don't have any input, you can have input. If you have input, um, so what you're suggesting is that individuals. So we send maybe five or six responses to the Army Corps of Engineers. Well, I mean, I, I think the problem here is timing, right? I mean. You know, the letters come out and you have like a certain period of time. Yeah, 20 days from the date of the letter. So, so it could be missing a meeting. And, you, you know, I think so if we want to 
have a response. I think, you know, getting our feedback to you or whoever, in which case this would be Matt, this case, mm -hmm. would be probably appropriate if, you know, everybody has the right to, re to put their sort of vote into the, mm -hmm. you know, to be, you know, disseminated to the Army Corps. So you're suggesting that we, if, if there are six different thoughts that all six send it to us? That, that would be, I mean, if you could consolidate them, you know, because they're all very similar, then, all, you know, the, the consensus of the committee would be this. But if they are so different, then I guess you send them all separately, I guess, right? I mean, what are you going to do? I, I, since this is new and we haven't right. gotten any feedback from the Army Corps to one of our responses, I, I don't know how they'll they'll deal with that. I could, I could contact them and find out what they think. Have you, have any of you had dealing with the Army Corps? I haven't. Okay. It's just permit wise. Permit wise. It's, they're incredibly, incredibly slow. I mean, I've waited in some cases, two years for a permit from them that the DEC had already approved. So I think yeah, if you want, if you, Still meddling in, in there. I, I would my vote on, on this would be let them do their thing, and when it comes to us, we deal with it. I, I just think that getting involved with them is is, is not doing justice to, to the public that apply for, for stuff. Um, so we even know what the charge that the Army Corps is as far as examining these. What are, they, what are they looking what for? What code are they following? Yeah. What, what's their criteria that they're looking for? The only thing they've come back on me, to me is, is about navigation. You know, that, that, was, that seemed to be their concern. Right. They had no. That you couldn't, couldn't be blocking navigation. But, you know, two years later? Well, I would think they're the federal review. They are the federal. And the state. It's the right. DEC. I mean, like and then we're the local. Everybody's got a right to say something, but as a as a as a committee, I would prefer that we let them do that. I mean, we generally haven't waited for the Army Corps to do anything, have we? I mean, for no, no. Talked no. To the no. no. Right. If they're the, if they're even there, right, right. That's that's and no, that, I mean, that has happened. That I mean, happened. There's lots of times there's no the uh, Army Corps thing there. Right. You never hear from anybody but the DEC most of the time. So to even get involved with that, it's 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 a good heads up. I think it's great notice for us. Yeah, it but is. I wouldn't. I would just let it lay. Make you make your points. Say what you have to say when the, when the, when it comes to us. I think I don't think it's going to change. Oh, did some? Well, is that somebody? Uh, yeah, I was I was going to jump in, but but uh, but you know, go, go ahead and let me know. I, I had a comment on it, but well, I, I think it's a good heads up, and I don't know what they would do with our comments anyway, quite honestly. Um, whether it's going to change to them in a year. <laughs> then, yeah, right, right. Put it back in the pile. <laughs> yeah. But as far as getting a, a, time, a heads up and knowing what's coming down the pike, it's really, it's helpful for us to see the notice and have it distributed. Right. right. Yeah, that's, that's. Yeah, no, it's good uh, to see it. I mean, it gives you a heads up, but you might not, have, you know. I think that, which, I mean, they're, they're, I guess that we are receiving it as a town and they're, they are asking for comment. I think if we have comment, um, I think it's appropriate to share. Um, I think we don't need to go out of our way to make comments on everything if we don't have a specific comment to share. But I think in terms of, you know, uh, I, I like sort of James' idea of like, you know, consolidating those comments together if people have them. Um, but then it would be, I think it would be sent out as, um, you know, well, typically, you know, as the chair, you know, as responding to on, on behalf of the committee in the interim, you know, we don't have a formal, we don't, you know, particularly might not have time to, to put together a, um, a formal response from the committee. And so it would be, you know, I guess sense of the committee from, as interpreted by the chair. Um, and then, but I think it's, it would be helpful for the, to consolidate those, those comments and they might well be disparate. Um, and just say, you know, here are the comments, consolidate them. Obviously you don't want to make it more complicated for them. They take forever. Right. So to be like, here's some comments that are very, you know, that are relevant for, from the perspective of committee members, blah, 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 rather than you know, having them go go through and try to collate different comments from different individual members. I think it is a, uh, a service to have the chair consolidate them and put them together. But I think it would be um, as much as possible as a pass-through 
not trying to put their own, you know, maybe even saying you know, the chair believes as an individual, and then you know, here are the other comments from other committee members. I think what um, the least I should probably do is is contact. There's a contact on this notice, and just um, I think give them a call and uh, see what, if anything, they're they expect they what they expect and what they're going to do with these comments they may just they may say to me you know we really don't well i wouldn't say that but let me uh before, before we move forward on the next one let, let me let me contact them and see what what's uh what's going on there yeah bill the, the one i saw before at the time signed by the, the army program signed it the title was some biologic marine biology guy mm -hmm. what does that have to do with navigation well, I don't know that it is only navigation. That's what Al's experience has been, but that may be the only the only item that he saw in that particular application. So let me let me let me look into it. Um, let's see. So those are the only two pieces of correspondence I received. I don't know if anyone else is aware of any other correspondence. Uh, so next uh, is a briefing by our liaison, uh, mm -hmm. our new liaison, I'd like to welcome Benjamin Diet, otherwise known as Benj. <coughs> um, so Jimmy Colligan uh, was our liaison for a number of years and did uh, a really great job doing just what liaison supposed to do, which is act as a link between the WMAC and the town board and assist in our communication and cooperation. And uh, I look forward to you picking that ball up and running with it and glad you're here. Um, I'm 30 I, to that's good. I, I, I have two requests right off the bat for you. <laughs> <laughs> if you can communicate to the town board, uh, how important it is to us that this new, um, our, our proposed dock moratorium uh, be supported. The uh, last town board, I think, was unanimous in their support of the moratorium. Um, so that, that, would be, that would be good if they could get behind that. I understand the hearing is January 22nd. Uh, and the other item was to Please do whatever you can to keep Christina as our uh, ass assistant, because without her, we'll all be working so much harder. Uh, so anyway, I'm not sure I have any control over that. But sure. <laughs> now, isn't Al a co? He is the alternate. We switched up the structure. Uh, we said two liaisons. Now we have sort of a primary and an alternate. I wasn't even aware of that. So, I thought you just came because you just want to <laughs> hang out. So. Oh, okay. Oh, well, welcome, Al. So, if either one of you have any anything you want to discuss with us or brief us on, got to react. Yeah. <laughs> Many minutes and trying to react. Well, this is a special occasion. This is my first committee meeting. Oh, as a think? town board member. Oh, this is my first one. I know we would have tell me all sorts of stuff and I won't know if it's true. <laughs> <laughs> the best thing about getting the boat, the first day you get it and the day you get rid of it. Yeah, right. <laughs> a while to go before that. <laughs> oh, I've gotten rid of a few. I'm talking about, about the last committee meeting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, but I, I look forward to being of some help to the committee. Be as supportive as I can, but uh, it's good. So we need. Thank you. I'm glad you're both aboard. Uh, let's see, the next item is briefing by me. So on the dock moratorium, uh, the town board um, had a hearing on the moratorium on December 12th, and basically heard from few people. Uh, and then the hearing was put over till January, so January 22nd. Since the Suffolk County Planning Commission had not had a hearing on it yet at, at that point, 
Uh, the uh, Planning Commission did have a hearing on January 4th, and uh, Stephen and I, Stephen Kiley and I appeared via Zoom, uh, and with the assistance of Christina and Stephen, we were able to get uh, unanimous support from the Planning Commission for our moratorium, which is, I think, a big deal. Uh, however, it was only for three months, not the six months that we asked for. Uh, they did indicate that, you know, we might be able to extend that. Uh, it runs uh, concurrent with, uh, I guess, our housing moratorium and with our comprehensive plan. So in March, they'll be looking at all of that to see how how we're progressing. Uh, I would just as soon treat it as if we only have three months to get it all done. Yeah. Uh, and kind of, you know, push on this. Uh, the other item is... Uh, trying to clarify some issues between the wetlands uh, chapter of our code and the dock chapter of our code. Uh, it had, it came up at the Rams head in. You actually were the one who pointed out the access to the dock, which cut through, uh, might've have, might have required a wetlands permit. I, th I think this is gonna be coming up more often. Uh, the interplay, it's really, it's, it's circular with the way the two codes, the two chapters operate right now. So uh, Stephen Kiley has set up a meeting between me and the uh, building inspector and the head of the planning commission. So committee. So we'll be going over that to try to straighten that out. Come up with some, some ideas that make those two chapters work a little better together. Uh, and that is it for my input. So new business, got a couple of applications. First one is the pre. My only thought was, why is this right out in the middle of everywhere? It's yeah. not really in the middle. It's like the, the channel's real, kind of where the hand is. Okay. That's really the, and that would be, your channel was over there, so these were up to the side. They are, is this so uh, this is, no, I think it was just a regular forum, wasn't it? Uh, it is repairing. It's repairing. It is repairing. If she lives right over on the shore, over by off of uh, Midway Road, on the on the west western, on the side. east side, the east side, <clears throat> on the on north side, whatever. It's on the Mananic Road, uh, Mid Midway Road side. Midway Road, it's <laughs> down in here. Okay. <clears throat> I didn't see. I didn't see any other issues with it. No, actually, I didn't see any issues with it either. Mm -hmm. We typically have warnings in like three people's names. This is that one. It should be one. Well, if it's repairing, it should be in the property name. Property owner, right? maybe they are all property owners. <laughs> it could be. She's on the on the Zoom here. Yeah. Oh, she Alice, is? she's with us. Yeah. Huh. Alice, can you hear us? I can hear you. I'm here. The um, question is, why, why are there are numerous? Uh, well, my husband, my husband and I own the property, and I listed my son who lives there. So, whatever is the right way to do it, please tell me. So we all three live there. Yeah, it should be under the property owners. This may be you and your husband. It to be Alice and Marvin. You can cross off Lucas. It's the ID, so it's a resident. So she's selling into the rubbish off the 
You're saying as a resident, he could also be on with the other two? I'm just saying that he... He does live there. Yeah, he does live there, yeah. Primary resident. Yeah, I'll just work with a boring... The riparian is connected to the property, right? And that would be name on deed? Well, it would have an effect down the road, way down the road, if... Um, yeah, you know, if, if mom and dad decide to go somewhere, yep. he's still there, you know, then it just would just keep going the way it is if he stays on this. Otherwise, yeah. if he became it's the property property. owner or whatever, it would be a transfer. Then it would, be a, then it would have to apply again for the mooring, right? I mean, it would probably be the same mooring, you know, the way it would work. But. Right. Did I transfer from family? No. no. Unless it, no, unless no, it were to be a... To do? If, a non if it was a non-repairing right mooring, then it would be a single individual listed, right? Well, would probably be the boat owner. Oh, the boat owner would be the applicant. Okay. For a non for, for, for a private mooring. Right. For a private the repairing, it's with the property, so it's... Seems to me it should just be the uh, property owners. Property owners. Property owners. Yeah. Each listed applicant. Hmm. <clears throat> that could actually get in their way if they have all three on here. All right. Then, then if one of them wanted another mooring, then they would bump the uh, riparian out. Right. It probably is to your benefit to have your son off of it. Have your son off. Can you put a line through that? <laughs> <laughs> and that's uh, just Aaron. take this out. I assume you're out of it. Okay, so that is by Lucas. Lucas. So it's Allison Marvin Dupree. Okay, so with that change, does anyone have any issues? Yes. I'm good. Tom, um, you good? I'm James? Good. I'm good. Al, good. I'm good. Mark? Mark? I'm fine with it, thank you. Matt? Agreed. Agreed? Okay, so we have six, six out. Oh. Approved. Second uh, application is the uh, Town of Shelter Island, for the Congdon Creek Dock Work. This is this is an application from the town for a town facility, and I I don't think that we normally discuss them as part of a, an application process. We don't vote on. We, we never have. Really? I mean, we put comments in, like we put comments into the police doc. Okay. But I, I don't know that we, there was any vote there. Right. There's no vote. <laughs> but they should still, should have input, whether, regardless of whether it's a vote or not, I imagine. Some, some form of input from the Waterways Committee, I think, would be. Yeah, I think, I think we should be reviewing them in case yeah. we have any questions. Um, You know, it seems to me it should be like any other. I mean, we're going to take our we'll take our input or not, as they usually do. More and more often. <laughs> um, but there was a note that uh, Christina, had, I had the same problem with it originally. So Christina yeah, okay. made me an 11 by 17 copy. We still couldn't read it. And then she got, the, you got another. Uh, Original PDF. Right. And you could, when you blew that off, you could see it. Um, but it's the PDF version. Oh, yeah, that that okay. Well, maybe that's what I downloaded here then. Made of. I could be wrong. Yeah, it's not there anymore. What did well, um, no, I just I just wanted to know. Uh, it appears that there was a 
the it goes along the bulkhead. There's a face, and then there was a return and another return. It looked like there was a little an indent there. Yeah, like a little little um, indent, and then I guess I, I imagine it went up along the existing marsh grass. Um, yeah, I couldn't. I couldn't. Determine that from wondering what the length of that facial was if it had expanded. I mean, if it ex if it increased, it would would be great. I just wanted to make sure it didn't decrease. It didn't really look like it increased it a lot. You know, I'm more worried about a decrease. Right. I mean, it, yeah. it doesn't look like it decreases, but it doesn't look like it increases too much. Yeah. Okay. That was really my own, own concern. You're talking about the what, uh, north. The ball uh, the north. The north leg yeah um but the length of the eastern leg the length going from the dock to the northern return that is the length that we want to make sure it doesn't decrease in size uh that yeah yeah calling that east north and south? <laughs> yeah is there a cursor it's not see from there it's not oh well, yeah there it is so just to the left of the hand there. But. The design looks like it's it's a better benefit to people unloading there. Um, it's just that one length of that one thing. Um, make sure you can get a get a boat in there, you know. Yeah, I'm, but I'm all for anything's an improvement there. <laughs> it's primarily to lift it up. Um, <clears throat> yeah, you get it out yeah, of the water. Get it out of the water. Yeah, yeah. That whole wooden. Catwalk is going to be removed. That was my question. I didn't understand that that was. Um, I believe they were, was that's going to, that's going up. Yeah, the whole thing's going to come up to that level. Yeah, yeah, that's that yeah. going to disappear. You yeah. know, and it looks like the return is more pronounced than what is there. You know, it comes back in a more formalized way. Yeah. You know, even the, the, the one that's there, and then there's the jog, and then it is formalized. So it looks like you're going to have like more. There's the another ring room there. Yeah, yep, yeah. There's a little more more uh, space there. Yeah. Yep. John, it's my understanding. I have a department for DC for over two years. Yeah. In the pool, it's down to a blade of grass. Mm -hmm. So unless, unless the WMC sees some gross problem. No, I think it's it's. No, I mean, I think I think it, it's been taking so long. It'd be great just to get it done. Yeah. Yep. You know, and make it so that it's usable in all tides and whatnot. Mm -hmm. nope. Yeah, I don't. I don't think anyone's got a problem with it. it was just no, a matter no, of, it was just there a was, question. Yeah, there was, there was a, a lot of information on the on the plans, and it just made you curious as to what it said. Yes, <laughs> so it was just a matter of getting it in a format where we could read it. But oh, it looks looks good. Um, the I just wanted to touch base. <laughs> while we're on this, if we're done discussing this particular permit at the town dock, the two hour tie up needs to be addressed hopefully this year at that end of that dock. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't think we have to vote, do we? Well, do we vote on it? We tabled it, we might as well vote, and, and uh, we had the discussion, so it'll be on the record. Well, I think it's great as is. Yeah. I second. Yeah, go for it. Yep. James, good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Mark, Adam. good. Agreed. Matt, good. Okay, five zero one recused. Safe. Safe. <laughs> Safe. Yeah. Safe. It's all good. Can we discuss this? How do you write so fast? Or yeah, yeah. Do no, you but, really need the you really need the full size plans to see anything. I, I'll be more than happy to discuss it outside the meeting if you want. Okay. I think we're all good on. Yeah, we're all good. It was just a curiosity thing. Yeah, yeah. sure. It looked. It looks like a good, good project. Yeah. Yeah. What was your? So you had a point on it. Um, I just wanted to touch base um, and hope that the two-hour tie-up at this at dock, the, at the end of Congdon Creek Dock, where the police boat currently is, can be returned to the public hopefully this year. Um, believe it or not, if you look at the town code, the police department is in violation of the code on the end of that dock that's supposed to be for two hour tie up and it was commandeered a few years ago and till now it hasn't been replaced um there needs to be public access for you know temporary tie up there there always was 
Um, it wasn't a dock or anything at the end. It was simply the end of the dock. Is this depiction correct? Isn't there another piece of dock there? There is. That's an old photo. Yes. There is supposed to be a police. Oh, there it is. There it is. Yep. That police dock there was never there. It was just simply the end of the dock was there for tie up, um, temporary tie up. The police department added the T at the end, and um, the public has lost the right to access the end of the dock since then. Well, I mean, it was just a, whatever the width of that dock is, six feet. Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't an extra float or nothing. It was just access to the end of the dock, yeah. And is that a giant deal, or, I mean... Yeah, actually it is, because you drop you want, what do you do, you drop want your, you want your boat, put the boat on the end of the dock, and then you can move your trailer. <laughs> and also, two hours to come in, you know, somebody from the Anchorage wants to come in and go to the store, they get a taxi. Um, myself, personally, I used to use it to change boats. I'd come in, tie one boat up to the end of the dock, grab the other boat. So and, there's no open you know, slip or anything you can pull into, it's just, that's the only access to the, the dock? That's the only slip that was open to public. Um, and you know, every one of those other slips are taken. Well, the so, thing is, is somebody will pull into somebody else's slip and now you've... Right, I'm, I'm just yeah. saying, you know, but yeah. every slip is spoken for, even if they're not being used. Yes, every slip there is spoken for, I believe, except for the first one by the ramp. But that's not really no usable. There's no water there. And is there usually, a, I guess, the police boat's there whenever it's not being used, so you never know what that schedule yeah, Well, that has to... The police access there is great. I love it, and it should be there. Um, but it should remain so that it's only emergency use, so that somebody doesn't pull in there, tie up for two hours when the police department has. Well, they only have the two boats, right? Yeah. Yeah, I believe. Oh, that's three. There is one. Well, they used one in, one in each. One in each. There is one in each. One in each estuary. Right? I think we we're saying that. No, there's only two. I think. There's only two of those whalers, whatever they are. Yeah, one's in. One's at one's at one's at Dickerson, and one's at no, Dickerson. This, yeah. this yeah. came up. There, there's also the. <laughs> The boat that's at Deering Harbor is one of those two boats. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I thought that was the whole point that John had brought up about having three. He wanted to have three boats on on a three-day weekend or a holiday weekend. Yeah, and sure Bo came in and said, boats. no, there's only two boats. Yeah. Well, there's another boat. They have another boat, but I don't know what shape it's in. It's down at the, you know, the impound. That's going to be the pump-out boat. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Tom, Tom, maybe to answer your question, um, you know, you, you will have, hopefully that bulkhead will be a little bit more usable. Well, you know, yeah, for pack out only. Yeah. And um, there, a part of this is a, uh, like a maintenance dredge. So I saw if they that. go along, <laughs> if they do the other side, I can't remember, but I, I think the, uh, the concept was to go along that whole area i think okay. so that would open, could potentially open up that other side you mean the bulkhead like the south part of the bulkhead is that actually yep. a slip there where there's a boat up against the bulkhead well there is this might get dredged along with that i don't know i don't but i know for sure this is supposed to get dredged and the bulkhead height is going to be raised so that it'll be usable i mean that's the concept uh, the DEC was adamant about us not touching any of the grasses. Yeah, no, I really anything that, that yeah. you yeah. hold that off was any, any, uh, anything you hold off any more on. I mean, mm -hmm. the grasses are growing through where the asphalt is. It's like yeah. we're just going to get shut down. That's why I was suggest. I was thinking maybe if if the uh, the T at the end were if you added a. Uh, an L off the south side of the T and poli police boat. You mean it long, made the T longer on one side? Well, I think that if you put the, the police boat on one side of the T on the opposite side of the dock as the boat that would be temporarily in there. Let me see if I can do this. Here. Well, I mean, if you can change the end of the dock, you want to change the plan to make it way If you took the police boat and put it over here on a dock that was here, You'd gain the two-hour tie-up back. Or you yeah, could just basically. put another, extend the T. Well, yeah, you could extend the T and put this. Well, I was thinking that the police boat likes to be cordoned off. And if it was on a separate dock there, 
it'd be easier to coordinate off. Yeah, I mean, you could put, if you wanted to put a gate across right where the end of that float is. It's bullish to make any change to this plan at this point. I don't think, I don't think we're no, going to. No, this isn't a change to the plan we discussed. This is, this, this is, is after, after, after. Like after, down the road, he's yeah, talking about. After, yeah. This is after what, what is it? So, so the bulkhead, you can ask for a modification. It's not a big deal, but you don't want to do it. The a new bulkhead. No, that's and, nothing to do with what. That's a good idea, Tom. That's yeah. a very good idea. Does the new bulkhead extend in front of that grass? Uh, on the going down here? It's a real. It looked like it. Thing. We're not allowed right to touch Right where your finger we're is. To touch the, we're not allowed to touch that. Right, but you're not putting a bulkhead in there, front of that. There is a bulkhead in front of it now. It's that's going to stay where it is. There you're not fixing be, it. There will be a return underneath the ramp that's going to go up. Oh. And there's going to be the bulkhead will stay as long as it is right now. On the other side, would get raised eight point inches. The return gets raised, but then it has to come in and then go out. Because of it, you know. Right. I mean, that, we see that, but I mean, I was just thinking if, if that that bulkhead that's there was restored, you know, to the bottom side, you know, and maybe a catwalk on top of it, then it could be used for what you're saying. Right. Leave the grass on the backside of it. That's something Which is what it is, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. That could be addressed later. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, I just like to keep that conversation open. <clears throat> I'm not tie up the internet doc. No. Well, it's not for any wrench in the work now. No, no, no. Totally separate edition. It's totally separate. Carry, carry it over to, you know. Yeah. This, when do you think the work takes place? Uh, I saw it went out for, uh, you know, there's, okay. a, there's a request for bids. Oh, okay. So, so if it happened, would it would be a year, year and a half, or? You know, I mean, it, it, it can go on pretty soon if they get oh, really? the right. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, I mean, this is the this is the biggest hurdle. And, yeah, this yeah the DEC day could happen in the spring, maybe. I mean, right, right. potentially. Oh, great. Okay. So it'd be nice to be able to spread that news around. You know. Okay. So okay. So we vote. We voted on it. We're done. Yes. With it. We're done. Um, let's see. So other business, we've got um, chapter 53 revisions. So last time um, I had asked if you guys could take a look at the Alice that Matt had put together. Right. Uh, all 43 different areas. I went around I went around and did, <laughs> started. And I went from number to number to number to number to number to number. And I'll, I'll put it in a format that you could read. Um, Okay. Be I mean, it just recommending where not to put it out. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll, give, I'll give you a sense of what I, how I approached it, which initially was definitely the wrong way because I was fascinated by all the information that we got on each lot. So I found myself looking at every single lot. It took a ridiculous number of hours. So you really got to keep in mind that we're looking at these as areas and not. I, I just said what, what's here is here, you know. If there were areas that were pristine, God bless, let's keep them pristine, you know, and they weren't conducive to having a dock. Okay. You know, I mean, there's, two, there's two criteria. I mean, you know, there's some places that are maybe not so developed, but are conducive to have a dock, and maybe they should have a dock, you know, but there are other places that are are not conducive, as we've talked about. And... In those places, you know, maybe there's a dock in there, but so be it. That guy's grandfathered then. I don't know. So after going around and around and going through it a few times, what I ended up doing just to help me out was I came up with sort of a, a, a code. <coughs> and what I did was uh, identified areas that were I marked them off as having either issues of depth, so I put a D on it, or issues of exposure with an E, or issues of navigation or traffic with an N, and then issues of public or pristine beach. And then I just went through the whole list and, and 
And it was kind of interesting to break it down that way. For an area like um, Peconic South, I saw issues of, we have issues of depth, exposure, traffic, you know, navigation, and public beach or pristine beach. Um, and that was the only area I saw that had all those four issues. Um, one that had three of those issues, depth issues and exposure and, and public beach was Peconic North. Uh, and then when you get into just exposure and depth, there's a whole list. Um, Hay Beach to Diner Rock, Hay Beach to Gardeners, yeah. and Hayden to Causeway, Little Ram North, Big Ram North, Big Ram out to Ram's Head. Your pad looks exactly like the pad I used <laughs> to do the same thing. Right? I mean, it's yeah. kind of... Um, and then um, issues of exposure and public beach or pristine beach be like Crescent Beach. Uh, at least the east end of it, the west end is pretty well filled in. Hay Beach Point. Um, depth and public beach, you have the Heights, Chiquit Point. They have the public beach there. Uh, issues of just exposure, South Ferry, Shorewood, Quinnipet, uh, Heights Bluffs, and then depth issues, Dickerson Creek, Lower Menantic, Crab Creek, Cockles Harbor Northwest. One item that was on here that would jump out at anyone looking through this would be the lagoon. And so the lagoon shows up uh, on, in Matt's atlas as being like two feet deep. It doesn't reflect the, the dredging. So I'm just wondering if any of the other Places are like items that I marked off have been dredged and just aren't pop properly reflected. Which lagoon is that? Uh, so the beach so the beach. Yeah. Um, you know, like, and, and I'm, so I'm just running through this because I, I, I finally got this done as of like last night. Um, I will put this together somehow also, if you can do yours and then, anyone, and then we'll. I bet you they're going to be pretty the same, but maybe not, you know, not exactly the same, but the, the area is going to be the same. Um, and there are certainly definitely some items we, we want to go and take a look at. Um, West Neck Creek, the Upper Creek. <laughs> so I feel like I need to go and look at them because they just weren't clear to me. Um, Quinnipet area looks like maybe you could do some docks, Mary's you couldn't do docks. Uh, the Heights Bluff area, uh, Cockles Harbor to Little Cedar, interesting area in there. Like yep. uh, Congdon Creek, uh, Mashamic wasn't covered in this in Max Atlas, and I I think it's. You know, just fit it in with, you know, the parcels on either end. Yeah, I think it's, I, I think you made a good point. James made a good point last time. If we should probably restrict that area in order to get ahead of any changes that might take place in ownership of any of that property down the road. Um, and maybe, you know, give someone an idea that they probably don't want to buy that property. Um, the, um, the other thing that, that I noticed, and I think there's a lot of uh, post code review compliance checks that we have to do. A lot of mats, blue with uh, red stripes around. A lot, of items, a lot of areas where docks look like they were never, they're, they're not uh, registered or Permitted? Sort of like what Tommy was talking about in his. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, yeah, well, there you run into a pre existing non conforming situation. Right? If they can. Most of the time, I imagine. Yeah, I guess. It's hard I mean, to build a dock without somebody saying, hey, where's your permit? You know. Uh, small structure. Right, 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 right. Some of these were probably built for, yeah, before the code. I mean, that's yeah. not that would not be very but, surprising. But Matt pulled this off of the assessors uh, list. So even if they were not permitted, they should be the assessor should be aware of them. And, the, you know, and then whatever, you know, being taxed yeah, as a, as a um, valuation as issue as and valuation. Yeah, they should definitely be. So there's some of those there, out you know. there. I just take a quick note on that, um, if, if I might. 
Yeah, I mean, uh, I you know, I was I was pretty pleased to put together the most complicated symbol structure possible. So uh, um, <laughs> I'm really uh, I apologize for that, but hopefully, oh, it, it works it well. Good, I think I think it worked good. Yeah, we're good. Yeah, we're good. Um, but in terms of just the yeah the there was the the assessor you know lists it and and to the extent you know I mean I tried to get that information and 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 make sure I was accurate in, in representing it. But I mean, it you know, it's there's obvious when there's a discrepancy between what I put in there and what they said. I mean, it could be you know bad sort of bad data on my side or bad interpretation on my side. Um, but it also could be you know I've gone in there and said I see something that I thought was a dock. It might not be, or it, you know, it might be a boat or whatever because I was using purely the sort right. of satellite photo. Um, oh, okay. So I think that's you know we shouldn't you know. I, I think, the, you know, I trust the assessor's information and that's why I was sort of saying, you know, we should look into these other ones. You know, I think there's something there or I thought I saw something there. Um, so that's the sort of cause to go, as you said, to sort of do a uh, do a look and, and see what's there. You know, and the assessor can take that information or leave it or we can go in, you know, but I was just trying to make sense of it uh, and sort of match up what the assessor was saying, what I was seeing in front of me on the, on the. Uh, oh, yeah. Well, as a tool for what, you and I were doing, you know, I mean, it works fine. Oh, it yeah. great. Oh, yeah. great. Yeah. And, and, and as far as dealing with all these possible compliance issues, this is way down the road for us. This is after, see, we don't want to get bogged down in that now. Um, the one other thing on the, on the depth uh, front, I mean, yeah, there's, I, I mean, I was trying to use sort of, you know, as, you know, as recent information as I could in terms of like depth, but I couldn't get stuff that was super recent that actually included you know, the real, like, you know, that was a um, sort of a survey quality depth. And I think most of the data that's in there, I think is about a, it's eight years old or something like that. So, so anything that's happened in between on the depth front specifically, it yes. might, um, yeah, it might not show any dredging or significant sand movement that's happened in the interim. So that's going to be something to, you know, take with a grain of salt. The, the, the photos are more recent. But so like so there might be a mismatch between what it looks like happening on the photo, for instance, and what's happening with the the lines I've drawn. So the lines there are are based on uh, NOAA data, and that data is I think the like their most recent sort of high quality scan was I think eight years ago. Eight years ago. Oh, what was dredged since then? So if there's if there's new data, if somebody has access to that, or if somebody says, "Hey, there's something," I'm happy to take a look, and I can if it's if it's um. Um, you know, it's it's quite possible I could put it right in and 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 do a new layer pretty quickly if if we find new data that's um, you know uh, granular enough to put in there. Well, I think so. I think so that helps. Reason. I mean, I don't, we don't South need to make more work. Right? Creek and Dickinson Creek have all been dredged in the last few years, and we've got some yeah, and Crab Creek. Grand just really just for an entrance. When they dredge, yeah, yeah, they dredged they dredge a, a channel in like they did in Lagoon, or they just dredged the mouth. When you're talking about Crab Creek, well, which one? Uh, well, the first one I have on the list is Dickerson. Was that just the mouth, or is that the? So they dredged they, into the. They go to just beyond the police bug, right? right. Yeah. Almost to the end of the bulkhead. Yeah. Yeah. So at the mouth and and, okay. and that's on on schedule for next year too to open it up. We do that every year, I think, right? Or every, every year. other year. Yeah. Every, it's, yeah. as, it need, you know, yeah. as it needs it. When they're here. You know, they got good water. How about Lower, lower Manantic? Did they ever? You no, know, we've talked about it forever, but nothing's okay. been done, right? Uh -huh. the, the schedule is, is to go as far as Tar Kettle next year in the, the next dredging season. They finally got the permits, and unfortunately, they didn't have the time or the manpower to do it this year. But they, that is on on the radar for next year. Okay, good to know. Was there something coming behind that? Like there was going to there was someone trying to do additional dredging. Yeah. Is that going to maybe? What in Manic? Yeah, there was a, some like this. The, There's a group. There's a oh, there was a woman that was on the group. on the call. Yeah, she was yeah. on the call. They, yeah. yeah, they're working on that. I don't know. They were going to do it an, an they're, additional. They're, they're monitoring and getting data, you know, in conjunction with um, 
the water quality the, information. Yeah. The water, the water quality or, you know, and to substantiate why it should be dredged. Right. Oh, okay. That's where they're at. They're at the, but it's another one of those things that you. I mean, it's dead up there. You know. <laughs> to wait until. Yeah, and I believe they they were told this, that too. This was a this was a long, long stretch. This was yeah. many years to get to go as far as they are, and after that, if there's still an issue, then it's then it's time to raise it. Yeah. Okay. So Crab Creek, have they um, they. Uh, they dredged the mouth of that also privately. Yeah. Oh, that was. Oh, that has been dredged. When was that? Privately. Oh, is that Royer? That's the Royer dredging. No, no, no. no it's Crab Creek. Actually, Crab Creek. The, the community right. member Silver Beach Association took donations and they and they did a. Uh, they opened it up. It, it's Is that recent. Uh, I'm going to say maybe eight to ten years ago. Oh, well, okay, I think it's already, that, it's already that opening is yeah. since closed up yeah, and a right. new one is open. Right, yep. right, right, right. right. A new one for the like north right. of it, right? Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah, right, right, right. Yeah. All right. So, I mean, Crab Creek is probably not. I mean, it's not navigable. It's not yeah. navigable. Yeah. That's it's not navigable water. Yeah. yeah, but it does. Have, it does. You do have to keep an eye on it, make sure it stays open. So, for you know, the, the yeah. health of the yeah. ecosystem. Right. Right. Uh, you know, Dickerson is considered navigable, and I, I think we need to remember that. Okay, because Dickerson's only navigable to a certain point. Yeah. And, you and, know, it's, and, it's, it's, and it's the county that's doing it. Certain tide, certain point. It's the county yeah. that's doing it. <laughs> and yeah. I mean, I need to my point of view, Dickerson Creek is open as much as it ought to be. Yeah, no, you definitely don't want to do any more than what they are doing now. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Uh, Cockles Harbor Northwest. That looked really shallow up in there. I don't. I don't think that's an area that would be dredged. No, no, that's a big flat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's probably scallopers are that's doing plenty we of dredging. All, that's where we were. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's where the fleet was this year. Yeah, we had three three good days up there. Up near Captain Bob's. Uh, no, uh, just to the north of the mooring field. That flat there, up in, right. the, up in the head. Yeah. Uh, what else? So yeah, if you can, if you can put something that, or whoever's got anything on you know, feedback on, on this, I think if we can try to keep in mind uh, those points, depth exposure, um, public beach or pristine beach, um, and navigation or traffic. I mean, that's at least those items are uh, what I think the atlas is good for. And then the next step, I think, is go down and and take a look, do some site reviews, and all of this is kind of helps inform uh, the amendments that we're putting together. And then you know, we're just like to get that done on um, that night, you know, as soon as we can get something done and get it out to everybody to look at. But that's I haven't had much time in the last month to do that, but that'll be my, my our focus, uh, next focus. And anyone else have any other thoughts about things to focus on with the? Well, I, you know, I like you know what you touched on before this, you know, the getting the wetlands versus the dock coats in sync. Well, so the issue is, yeah, it's really access to the dock. And it's really secured us, which, I mean, which hasn't, you know, up until recently has not been a giant issue. I mean, it was just a matter of fact that that, of course, you had to have access to the dock if you got a dock approved. You know, and it was just that's the way it was. Now, you know, everything has become more complicated. Well, I'm going to try to figure out how to make that work and not make it more complicated for the applicant so that they don't have to go through two reviews, but they, but the wetlands are considered when putting in a dock when they usually aren't considered now because the dock runs from basically in high water out into the water. So it never involves the upland 75 feet that is the regulated area under the wetlands code. So that's usually where the ramp, where your ramp is. So yeah. that's why we need to get, I want to get access slash Board, what do you want to call it? Boardwalk, catwalk. You want to get it into the dock code so it's part of our review somehow. 
Um, and this may be with a question for, you know, this sort of doesn't have, well, it sort of does have something to do with something. Uh, but <laughs> at the end of the, the last meeting, Jim Culligan kind of fluffed over this thing about the dock for Sunset Beach. Does yeah, anybody, I don't know where that's at. Anybody have any kind of uh, filler on that? You know, like what? Heard the rumor. Well, no, there's a there's definitely a rumor, um, you know, and, and there's been some now some people have done some research on deeds and how all that property got, you know, had something to do with, the, you know, the Shelter Island Association, you know, and the we can't meet and grow, you know, can't you know, be prior to the Shelter Island Association and all that stuff about who owned what and when and how did the rights get transferred to Charlie Krause? to have a dock <clears throat> and how did those get transferred to Sunset Beach to have a dock, you know, and it seems counter, you know, and counter to whatever I've, I've gone through in the last decade that the town would be putting a private dock on their property. That's what I was assuming. Was smoking, smoking like this, but after what they oh, I just through. wonder about that. Yeah, but after what they just went through, but the ram said, I, I just, yeah. the problem is my one. I, yeah, but. Uh, I think it's in the code. It could. The dock needs to land on the owner's property, on the dock, dock owner. Whoever owns the dock, it has to land on his property. You would think it's, 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 it's just like that. You would think. It's in the definition of a dock. Well, I'm, just, I'm just saying that there's, it was just like, it was like a deal was being crafted that seemed like we knew about it, but I had no knowledge about it. It, it should have probably been brought before us if it was actually a permit. I don't think. I don't think any. I, I haven't heard of any approval or any. Uh, all I mean, there, 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 there are a couple, of, a couple of three town board members here. Maybe they know. Them. <laughs> maybe you guys. Can fill I haven't heard about it. No idea. Maybe you guys. Too much newbie now. Fill us in. I can ask. Christina, <laughs> uh, you know anything? It's not there. <laughs> <laughs> you can you can ask the supervisor next time you see her. But, <laughs> oh, is that right? Okay. There's currently no application. It's not an application. It was more of an exploratory. Exactly. Apparently, they have something in a deed that allows them to put the dog in certain locations, but it's not necessarily practicable at this point of time. So. The town asked them whether they would entertain to change their deed covenant to put it in a different location. Currently, we own the title search. Okay, so that answers a bunch of my initial questions. Why I heard that they had the right to put the stock someplace was whether it was in writing, whether it's in the deed, so it runs with the land, or whether it's contractual, who the parties were. So if it's in the deed, so there, so that if it is. Yeah, so the process has started. The survey, I just went up to the unit and it shows a 75 foot easement across the beach into the water. Charlie just wanted to go fishing. The reason he wanted it there. Charlie Krause? He wanted to go back bass fishing. Yeah, that was it. And you needed an easement across the public beach to get yeah. to the water? Yeah. Well, the precedent here now would be in our favor because Stuart Moore owned property adjacent to the Public beach, right. and the town was uncomfortable with boat traffic being that close, and moved to down the beach. And to Stewart's credit, he said, "He said I don't want to argue about this. This is where I live, you know." And he went along with it. Um, so that, that precedent might help out in this situation. It's worth relocating that. The precedent being someone being reasonable. <laughs> <laughs> being relocated. Yeah. So did Charlie own? The beach, or was this easement before Charlie when Strobel or whoever had it before Strobel? Well, that's they'll come up with that in the title search. I guess they will. Yeah, that's. But it was just a question. Yeah, no, I'm. Just, I don't think anyone knows the answer to it yet. <laughs> right. Um. Okay. So we did the Army Corps, right? Yes, we covered that already. So basically. Next item was to go over the waterways fund revenues. Um, so uh, 
Amber wants to get some more complete information uh, through the end of the year. And so once that's all put together, maybe come back next next time. Yep, I started to check on some of the work that was done. So this sheet that you had was handed out is correct. So scrap it and we'll have it updated. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's easy. <laughs> I don't know. I'm keeping a copy oh, well. of this. <laughs> <laughs> Um, all right, then. So it's, it's paper, the better. Still a reasonable hour. So it's another. Yeah, you're you're right. And that was yeah. yeah and that's that's the one support. I referred to that didn't make it. That was. Yeah, in I late. apologize for that. I've been I've had a pretty busy month. <laughs> the rest of us haven't been busy. I've been wrestling with this. Um, it's just you know it. it uh, well, what's so? What's the topic is not I don't see appli it app application fees. Okay, application fees. Right. We, we started to raise that last last uh, month, and I, I think it needs to be expanded and, and, and dealt with. Um, you know, I, I came into town hall today. I spoke to to Amber um, in, in town hall in the uh, clerk's office. And I asked, how, how are you? How are you implementing this? <laughs> because I don't understand. You know, every every piece of wood that goes in the, in the, in the ground, or, or is it just docks? So first of all, it's just docks. It's not bulkheads, all right? Which I think makes it makes a, a, a bit of a difference because on a bulkhead you have returns, you have filings that are hand filing, you have uh, you know uh, lay logs, you have tie rods being you know in every it's it, it's impossible. It's, it's impossible, isn't it? you know, to even know what's in the it's what's going in the ground. The other thing is, you find often that the drawings don't depict exactly how many filings. It's going to be approximate. So I, f I found that I find that interesting. That well, you're going to design a dock, right? And the plans that are approved right. are approximate. As I can't imagine someone putting plans in for a structure like a house or something right. like that. I mean, I would think that the designer would have that right. down before going out in the water. And what happens in the real world is different. I mean, you find, I'm sure you find the same thing with building. You know, you can't do that. You can't do that. You can draw it, but they right. can't do it. Right, right. And it, and it happens. It just happens. And, uh, and, and, Unfortunately, typically, it's the same thing with blueprints on a house. You know, they're on the job site the first day, and the next day you, you go on the job and they're, they're crumpled up in a corner somewhere. And never, never to be looked at again. No. <laughs> I've seen it. I've seen it. <laughs> okay. So, uh, no, I mean, they're, they're, they're a reasonable approximation of what's going to happen, but not, you know, not no, always. Exactly. So, with um Amber said she, she is had started doing is charging a thousand dollars for the application and then uh getting a second check for the for the pilings and having it having the number of pilings that go in confirmed before she cashes the check which makes sense so the confirmation of the number of pilings is it's, when it's Done, yeah, yeah. complete, and the right. building inspector goes and right. So it and I don't think the building inspector used to go and inspect. I don't think the docks. You know, like I don't see them counting. The, the, I don't know. Maybe I'm crazy. Then, then, then it's going to be an approximation. I mean, it's a reasonable approximation, but it's going to be an approximation. If you well, they're charging, you know, if they're charging by piling, right? Then it has to be. A number, but the number is going to be off whatever whatever the takeoff of the drawing is. Okay. Okay. Versus you know, sometimes on a dock you you see when you look at the cross section you might see three pilings, you know, one in the middle, and they may and when they build it they may do one of those every every other. And I mean Jack would be able to answer this much better, but maybe they do it every other set of pilings. Maybe they do it on every piling. Depends on the location. You don't know. You hit a rock, you can't put a right. pile in there. Yeah. So, right. I don't know. I have an issue just charging for the pilings. Yeah, that, that was kind of right yeah. off the bat. Too. Yeah. Charging yeah. by the you know, it's like, I mean, it's, how many studs are you going to put in the house? Okay, we'll put them on 24 inch centers instead of 
Yeah, yeah. Well, it's that, it's that. You know, it's I mean, that. like, oh, we're going to charge by the stud? Right. Now, the, the per piling, that, that was a new addition to the fruit fee? This, Is that before, new? Before, last, last year, to, to apply for a dock was $250. All right, straight out. Sorry, yeah. it was probably pretty low. Yeah. All right. But now it's $1,000 plus $100 a pilot. It's not uncommon for a 100 foot dock. You need 30, probably 30, 40 pounds. It's $1,000 additional. Yeah. That's overkill. Which is overkill. Yeah. Which is overkill. I, be, I believe the set fee is, and remove the piling fee because the piling fee. Set, is, I think it's reasonable to go up. Right. Yeah. The piling fee is. And it sounds like that it's, might not be a. It's ungainly. It's ungainly to deal with. I, I would agree with that. Well, on one hand, we're trying to limit talks. <laughs> but well, right, that's, that's, right. that's. I mean, but that that be could be accomplished maybe in a in an easier fashion that wouldn't require all this guesswork. But I I imagine this came about as uh, res after reviewing just what other people are doing in the area. Um. Okay, so that didn't come out of the blue. It actually came from somewhere in some other paper. Mm -hmm. But it might. Yeah. We're actually charging for every piling in the dock, and not just pilings that are not connected to the dock. I think every piling goes in the ground. I think that's but, the way it's, yeah, every piling that goes in. That's what was described to me. And a, and a, a dolphin would count as two or three if it's a three piled dolphin or two piled dolphin. I could see maybe charging for offset in a piling that are not connected to the dock. That's the way, like when, when Jack put in applications, the last few, if you noticed, he put in how many, how, it says how many, how many, uh, right. pilings, and, and put like two or three. Or zero. They're charging, they're charging for 30, 30 or whatever. Maybe, um, maybe that, maybe you look at a, a design of a typical 100 foot dock and figure out the number of pilings and just make it a flat fee based on that. And that's every 10 feet. It might save a lot of uh, you know, energy on the just, part of the then building just, department. Then it's just 40, depend, then it's just it's 40 on, pilings. It depends on what the spacing is. Right? It's roughly 40 it's pilings. Uh, you know, if it's every 10 feet. Spacing. And then. I know, but it, right. I'm just. Yeah. Because we, we don't want to encourage underbuilding of a dock. Right. Exactly. And, yeah. Right. yeah. And you don't we, want to make them unsafe. Yep. But I can understand want to gener you want to gener generate revenue. Great. Uh, and from my perspective, I, you know, I think you want to make it a little, I think you want to make people think twice about building these structures. Um, so the expense, you know, I don't, I don't have a problem seeing the expense go up. Uh, but I, this, I, this just sounds like a, uh, a problematic way to go about increasing these. Uh, but can we, get this, can we get any feedback from you guys? Yeah, did this get passed based on recommendation from this committee? Or? We weren't. There was no, no we weren't we involved. involved in this. This. We, there was no input. We this actually didn't even come up on the agenda. I believe somebody found it's it. Similar to the mornings. Yeah. Would it make sense to have a, a set fee, say two thousand dollars for a dock under fifty feet, and three thousand dollars for a dock over fifty feet? Could be. I mean, you know, I mean, there could be a scale. I mean, like a 100 foot dock, which is like, you know, maybe that's where you start. You know, you have a 100 foot dock, it's a thousand dollars, you know, or, or I don't know, whatever. So does it scare, but, but I mean, you know, like a, in a 100 foot dock, there's roughly 40 piles, you know, just in the dock. Yeah. Uh, you know, so that's tie offs and everything on dolphin. And if you have tie offs, that's, that's an extra, but I mean, that's just the, the basic structure of the dock is that. So that if that's you said hundred bucks a pile? Yeah, so that's four thousand dollars on top extra. of the thousand dollar fee. That seems substantial and I don't know. Overkill almost. And it's it difficult to to enforce. enforce. As you say, you have to say somebody's gotta go out and look at it, count them. You get unintended consequences when right. you do stuff like right. that. Yeah. 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 Right. Tell so you there are three piles. They're not right. right. So, so I would ask that you guys bring that to your to your constituents. Or 
You can't really tell. Maybe the hundred dollar fee yeah. per pilot is just plain too much. Maybe it should be a twenty five dollar fee per pilot. I don't know, but that just a hundred dollars easier just to have a set fee. Times, and I, and I like if you had the dock length that extended past easy. whatever you know. Or that would be the same. It's easy to think. Yeah. Yeah. Think of the proof. There, that, that's yeah, for a foot of dock, yeah. That's or that would encourage people to put shorter, more square footage, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 you use square footage of the dock to come up with the permit fee. Yeah, I'd probably yeah. talk about length, they're talking about width and everything. So it's well, that's that's a fair, those are some good yes. average length of the dock you're saying. I'm sorry, what's the rough average length? 100 feet, 100 feet. 100 feet. 100 feet. 100 feet. yeah, that's that's the code. Yeah. Yeah. And they're normally what three feet wide, four to five, four feet. Feet. Four to five, five feet wide. Oh, okay. Five is max, yep. four is often. Okay. Okay. So I, I have a couple other points on this that I'd like to, to entertain. Um, another one is, is we have docks, dredging, bulkheads, groins, and, and water control structures. The dock, a bulkhead, a groin, typically. They have a, a 20 to 30 year life. Dredging could typically be a maintenance dredging can you know, be every time there's a storm. It could be every two years. It could be every three years. It could be every five years. So I don't think the, the fee structure or even the application should be in the same, in the same piece of paper. It just doesn't, doesn't make sense. Dredging um, versus the rest of the rest of the, the rest of the items versus structures. structures versus structures. It's yeah. not a structure. It's a repair. It's a maintenance. Mm -hmm. um, it's something that typically we um, en encourage doing, as opposed to letting letting the, the sand build up in areas where you you are trying to navigate. Uh, so I think it should be cheap. it should be separate, and it should be it shouldn't be as as expensive. Because it is something that that's ongoing and not something that that it lasts for thirty years. Um, one way to deal with it is DEC. When DEC issues a permit, it it has a five year time frame. All right, with the option of if if you go back and and apply or, or say I need another five years, they just give it. They give it to you. They, they, they this, you this is on this is on any uh, docs. Oh, it, it, this is on any any DEC application for for a waterway structure. It's typically it, it's a, a ten year, uh, ten five year. Well, five year with a five year five year to you can renew after five years. Right. Yeah, you, you have to you have to send an email or you have to you have to ask. Right, and it's on the same fee. You don't pay another fee. Okay, town t the town ones are one year. All right, with I think you can renew once. You know, so so there's another reason why the dredging shouldn't be. How, how many under this under the dredging? Uh, is there a limit on the number of times you can dredge in a year under the DEC permit? They ask you to let them know each time you do it. Mess because it, it just came up recently uh, with the Royer. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. That's uh, it came before us in the fall, and when we looked at it, we determined that the dredging had already been done. It had already been done, yeah. Um, but now they're down there doing it again. Now I think our permit may have expired, but the DEC permit, as you point out, oh, they're back there again. Yeah, they're doing it right now, okay. and it's a different contractor than the contractor that was on the. So I know that I mentioned about that specific dredging project that they amend the dredge spoil site mm -hmm. to coincide with what they actually did. Well, they're dumping spoils, I guess, on the north side. Right. That's where they did the last time as well, yeah. up along the bulkhead. I don't have a problem with where they put them. I think that's a better spot than they were doing it, but it just wasn't on the permit. Yeah, so they're so basically under. I guess there's no limitations to how many times they can do it a year under the DEC permit, but our, I think our permit on that particular job may have expired already. So does that mean we want to expand the length of our permit to coincide better with what the DEC? At least the, dr the dredging permit. The should, dredging. At the yeah. very least, at the very least. You know, and now you, you, if you're doing a moratorium, 
and this moratorium drags on, some of these jobs that might get backed up. The ones that come through. Yeah, but five yeah, years, and 10 years. Yeah, I know, but that's, yeah, they don't have to worry about the DEC permit with, no. if it's five and 10 years. Right, DEC wasn't going to be a problem, but if you're paying $4,000 for a town oh, permit, and then now. you have to pay, pay again, you know. I don't we, think we've got any, we don't have any pending per, uh, applications with paid fees currently, so that's not an issue. The dredging. You have three, I believe. But they're, they're incomplete. They're incomplete. Incomplete is like nothing. If they okay. Are. It's not there yet. Okay. okay. The, um, the dredge, the dredging aspect, that would be separate from, that wouldn't be included in a moratorium that we're seeking. Correct. That's, that's, right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Okay. So that would continue on normal. I don't see that ever. And bulkhead work is not included either. No, bulkhead work is it's just done. repair of stock. Well, that's the tricky item. But it, uh, if we get if we come down to language on it, we don't want to say repair. We we don't want to consider repair. Because that's one of the items in the, that I pointed out last time needs to be changed in the code because repair under our current code, even if it's just putting boards down requires that you make a non-conforming dock substantially less conforming. And I don't think that's the way we want to proceed. I think we want to encourage people to repair without having to go through that. So it, that's right. that language right. needs to be changed. Maintenance needs to include repair. Right. And, and the other point being um, the $10,000 uh, threshold for that's, requiring a permit has been in place for the 17 years that I've been on this committee. And I think that that needs to be raised substantially because you can't get very much done in terms of a repair for yes, this. Yes, $10,000 on a dock. And then you got to pull a permit, you know. Uh, so that, I think that number needs to be raised and should be raised su substantially. I'm going to ask you guys. Yeah, well, that's part of the code that we'll be looking at. Um, Yeah, I mean, I think it's good that people, before they do work on a dock, that they, they that they would have to get a permit, but they have to get a permit to do uh, eleven thousand dollars worth of work and have to pay a thousand dollars to get the permit. Is kind of so maybe the permit for repair and maintenance should be different than a permit for alteration or modification. That would make sense. The repairs are five hundred. I listed it at five hundred. The the oh, on this on this, I mean that's new. Different list for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Here's a lot of stuff. Yeah, six foot six foot spacing on a hundred foot dock. Uh, permit would be forty four hundred bucks. Thirty four piles. Two tire off piles. Two thousand dollars. That's a flat fee. A lot more reasonable than uh, and a lot less onerous to figure out. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, See, the big problem, problem is just simply figuring. Yeah, I think the flat fee concept. Uh, yeah, flat fee, yeah. Or, or, or uh, progressive yeah. fee concept. I like the idea of a square footage measurement to come up with that. That seems like it's a uh, fair way to do it. And I, and I think it has... And you're going to be asking for another, another uh, element on the drawings that come in that oh, aren't right. required now. Okay, I didn't think about that. Yeah. Well, that's no big so, deal. Or somebody yeah, I don't think that. Out. Yeah, that's actually. I mean, if it's a five foot dock by 100 foot long. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, I guess we can figure that out. Yeah. Yeah, that's what we can do that now. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but then you got the ramp, you got the float. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's what you would have to consider is what the ramp does back to whether the ramp is part of the docking. 
So just backtracking a little bit um, to the 53. Um, so then we want to, in addition to this narrative kind of thing that we want to do or, or just getting into writing, we want to make a physical survey of areas. Is that what I'm here? Doing site. So, like, yeah, I, I mean, I mean, we can we, yeah, yeah, yeah. Should we start doing them on our own, or should we formalize how we would do that? Or no, we're going to bring in a, a professional, somebody with <clears throat> the coastal background. I thought that that was something that we talked about, and our hope that we were going to do, as opposed to so with with so with what goal in mind? What would we need a coastal person to tell us that we can go down and see? I, I think you want an outside opinion to as tell you to what, it. how high the tide comes up, or how whether it's whether it's whether it's it, it's whether uh, you're hardening th th that particular shoreline, some some particular some, or, or that you're not. There's no, there's no you know that there's really no problem. Well, that's a different that. issue, really, than what we're talking about. Yeah, I think the basic was just looking at the facts of what's of there what's there and, and whether is it a conducive. Yeah. In our opinion, I mean, maybe we do. You know, our survey might reveal that we need to get somebody who is more qualified. I don't know, but to me, looking at Matt's work. And then, and, you know, and, that, and I, I can envision all those places pretty much in my head already. Yeah, but like, um, like I was saying, and, you know, certain, I mean, spots that I felt personally, I would want to go and take a look at or have people look at it, like West Neck Creek, uh, upper area, the Quinnipet area, the Heights Bluff area, the Cockles Harbor to Little Cedar area, Congdon Creek. Yeah, we definitely have to do something. I think we have to put our eyeballs on it. Just for, uh, just for so due course, diligence. Of course, of course, but I think you think you need to. And I think once you do that and you bring back whatever questions you have or issues you have, as far as exposure goes, and I think that's one of the, the biggest issues, um, we, can, we can download all sorts of uh, historical data on wind and surge. I don't think you need a specialist to tell you anything about that. It's all that data. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> We all know without going. What do you think, John? I don't think that's 100% correct. I think Jim organized had a kind of yesterday program, did a presentation to the town board. Correct. They were looking for an expert. There was, a, there was a woman that kind of led that Bingo. meeting. She is the coastal geologist. It's how they call now the cooperative extension. And she would serve as somebody that would be qualified. I don't know how much time she go into a lot to this, what we're trying to do. I don't think any kind of comment from her would be valuable. Well, I think we first want to narrow it down to the areas we'd want her to look at. Yeah. And that's part of looking at this atlas. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Going get in, you know, eyes on. I mean, anytime, you, I mean, yeah. I mean, I, my, my point, I guess, is I, I don't know we should wait till next meeting to then make the next. I think, I think time is of the yes. essence here. And, you know, like this moratorium thing, it's only, you know, I have more people talking about it, more docks in Dickerson Creek, you know, like the, my, the two neighbors across the street from me that, you know, like, hey, maybe I want a dock too, you know, like, you know. Well, I think that after we do our, our initial review, if the need for an outside, right. you know, source. I mean, we can certainly have, a, we can, we we can, we can sub necessary. submit what yeah. we think to this person. And say, what do you think about it? You know, like, I mean, we're, we're, this is our goal. You know, we're trying to p pick areas that are conducive to a dock or not. We want to narrow. You know, these are the areas we think are not, and this is what we think are. You know, and do you have any comments? Yep. If, we, if we're going to entertain or you utilize some of that, we want to narrow the issues down and the areas down as much as possible in order to save time and money dealing with, you know, an expert. And, and, determine whether we even need expert feedback. I don't, I think a lot of these things are, all these issues are really objective and don't really require that, but we'll, we'll, we'll know at the end of our, that until I guess that's until debatable we're... about whose property you're looking right. at. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, that's, it, it, as soon as it's just to get the loss of circumstance, and as soon as they who brought up this, who brought up this? Those some outside stuff. Yeah, that's right. not, that's no, I think, I think we should. Lawsuit. 
Definitely, I mean, you know, well, definitely it's... good to keep them in the back pocket. Yeah, definitely. I, I think you know, it would be helpful to try to put some specifics on what, you know, to change the point, here, what's conducive specifically. And I think that's what's going to end up being difficult to define uh, or more difficult to define, I guess. Um, that's that's sort of where it's, you know, that's where the rubber hits the road, I guess. It's like what's conducive uh, for a doc. Um, but I think, uh, I think like everybody else, like, well, I have a general idea of where I think it's not a good idea. And I guess where, where those specifically end, and I guess that's going to be sort of like, you know, what is that region? Because, you know, the, the Atlas, you know, those are just so we could get a bunch of the lots all on the same page. And so some of those, you know, those lots are in different content or different, uh, characteristics, I guess, than even than ones that are on the same, even on the same page. I mean, not everybody, even a lot of them have similar characteristics, but but some of them might not have, you know, share that characteristic with the rest of the ones on the. Uh, yeah, we on might the have sheet. to define areas from this lot to that lot. You know, we're going to yeah. need to delineate, and yeah, the other, I mean, like, yeah, uh, Crescent yeah. Beach is a good example. You know, half of it is full of docks, and then from another, that point on, there's nothing. nothing. Or, yeah. uh, I don't know, but, or over on Peconic, you know, you see uh, north of bootleggers, there's all docks. South of bootleggers, there's no docks. You've got the pristine right. beach. So, and that's all on one. I, I think it's a function of history and how, how those properties were established and who owned them and how much money they had and whatever. Um, you know, I, I think the reality that's is, a point. But, but the for, the, for sure. the most part, Docs are in place where they're they should be now. You know, that's where docs have been built where they may make sense. Docs have not been built where it doesn't really make sense. Um, you know, I think that's the, that's the reality. But I mean, I think we need to just. But, but now there's a, like the push to well, it's going to make my property value go up. You know, if I have a dock, you know, even though I'm never going to use a dock, even though there's no boats here that can use docks. You know, that's. That's the problem. So you know, did, did you guys consider putting in um, a, a a wait period before you could apply for a dock once you bought a piece of property? We talked about it to that one individual. I think that would be Jim that, Culligan did. You no, know, that you wait at least one year, at minimum one year before you apply, so that you at least have the experience and know what the water's like. Yeah, we did. We recommended that and getting a mooring to you know. See, just whether you still had a boat at the end of the one year. Um, I think, I, you know, my, my gut is we should just move ahead. You know, if we think this, you know, uh, move ahead, get get our recommendation, run it by this other person, submit it to the town board. And, you know, I, I think we can't, you know, diddle about and think about this too much. No. I mean, I'm not that it doesn't require a thought. It, it, no, but we need to move. With that in mind, I would say, yeah, if you, uh, as you go through the atlas, as you make your own notes, um, go down on your own, take, make your own observations. Matt is actually, you're going to, Tom had given us a great list of criteria to put on a checklist and you were going to, whenever you get a chance, you'll get that out to us. Yeah. Like a site visit, uh, checklist. So yeah, that'd be great. That option this week. Yeah. Fantastic. Uh, any idea of how many, how many properties are, are, are eligible for a dock in terms of having a frontage uh, wide enough? Yeah, that was the other item that you can't tell and, from the Alice. And yeah. having well, all along, you know, a little stretch, like little teeny pieces, like where you have a piece there. No, it's where the property is so small that there's no way. Well, I, I got good out, it's out, it's out for all the other pieces, but a dock will. I, I did do a, a supplemental. Um, Al had asked about this, and I, I did a supplemental sort of analysis and, and tried to get sort of water frontage uh, for an individual lot. Um, it it broke my brain a little bit, but I, th I think I figured it out. Um, I don't. Um, I, I don't. Al, I sent you a number. I thought of um, lots at some point. I'm not sure whether that was in response to that specific question about the sufficient frontage, um, but I can go back and take a look. Um, uh, the, I think that would tell us a lot. But sorry, I think that would tell us a lot. I mean, but just looking yeah. at your your atlas that you've made, you you, you just and knowing the properties that are there, you kind of know if it's yeah. got enough setback 
faith or not. Yeah, not only that, but it's it's already covered. It's already covered in the code if you don't have a setback. So right. it's really, right. we don't need that additional information. No, no, I, I'm, I'm saying how, how many, what, what's the potential build out? What's the real potential build out? If we were to do nothing and just leave the code the way it is, that's my question. What are we looking at? How many, what's the reality? What's the I, real number? I, and I think that will help. I guess it helps. I, to me, if it's if there's one more dock that's going to go in in a bad place, it's enough to do the work to to prevent it. You know, I don't need it to be 400 yeah. or 200 or 100. Yeah. Things, you but know, the problem is the bad place isn't isn't is subjective. It's subjective. I, that, no, that's right. not you. I, mean, I get I get it. <laughs> it, it. But it but it's it's not subjective. I think it's I think it's very objective when you're talking about uh, exposure. When you're talking about depth, these are not ob these are not subjective issues. These are facts. Depth is you a have fact. exposure, you have depth, right. and you've got uh, public beaches, and navigation. you've got navigation. I mean, probably the most subjective one in that list is navigation. Is like, is it may or may not a guy take his boat into that area? But the others are hard facts. So I I, I argue with you. It's not subjective. It's, it's very objective, and I think. Based on that objective criteria, we could come down with some very good recommendations. I think I think Al's problem is more like, you know, are we going to tell people that they can't have a greenhouse, you know, like, or a pink house or whatever? You know, I mean, but that's but I think, I, I, well, no, I mean, in a way, you know, you're allowed to have at the moment, you're allowed to have a dock in front of your property, you know, like stupid as it may be, you know, and 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 people can build things on their house stupid as that might be you know like in your opinion you know but right. whatever whatever that they perceive you know and i don't agree with it that they should be able to do all these things you know just on town owned property essentially you know unless it makes sense you know i mean it it just doesn't you know when you look at stretches of of the island it, they're they're docks with no boats you know it doesn't make sense to put a dock there you know like you know Get over looking at the stars from the dock. Look at it from the beach. You know, like, and I think that's where we're coming down here. I mean, I, you know, nobody likes that. You know, like, uh, I didn't like when things got changed in the zoning code that pre precluded me from doing stuff that I could do when I bought the property, but it changed, and that's the way it was. John. Oh, well, <laughs> told me that the county's now drifting them out the cockle farm. Right, I think that that done. They're done. They're done. They're done. <laughs> and, the, and the other concern I have, the WMAC have taken it upon themselves that the, we have this issue of waterfront development, the docks and all. But I don't know if we've heard from the town board, you know, whether they're have the same concerns. Oh, I, I, so it, it's it's in the comprehensive plan. It's a, it's one of the items of concern in the comprehensive plan. So we used to go through all this work, and then the town board come along and say, you know, you want to have a problem with our fifty foot docks. I don't know if that's a discussion that needs to be had. Well, it would save it's time if, if that was the case. It would save time if we got a yeah, <laughs> yeah, say back yeah. off. And look at the town board as they want to address the issues they have to look. We're going for priorities and. Initiatives and things tomorrow. Okay, well, that's on the list. Hopefully, we'll work in the same direction. Anybody else got anything else to talk about tonight? Still an open spot on the board, John. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, I am still there. I, know, I, I have a Given the fact that he's shown up at every meeting and always has something to say, I think we should, he needs a new uh, handle. I'm going to, he's going to be the chairman emeritus. <laughs> oh, that's a really different perspective. It's really interesting. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I think we're done. Uh, motion to adjourn. So moved. Um, is there someone here? Did you come Did to you say something? For the seven o'clock meeting. <laughs> oh, you're early. Congratulations. All right, second. Mark had his right. hand up. Oh, Mark? What? 
I will, excuse me, you're being very kind. I was seconding the motion to adjourn. <laughs> <laughs> Third. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.